Who hasn't spent hours playing Legos? I think it would be safe to say everyone in this country has owned a set of Legos at one point in time. The company's billion dollar annual revenue is a force in and of itself. But when Hollywood writers Phil Lord and Christopher Miller decided to use the iconic toy company as their subject matter, no one expected the film to be so popular. Critics and fans loved it. They were instantly catapulted into the spotlight and heralded as heroes for the brilliancy of their creative storyline. During an interview with the Los Angeles Times, they were very candid about their intentions, saying, We set out to use a big commercial studio film as a Trojan horse to relay a message about the power and necessity of grassroots creativity. This movie was certainly a Trojan horse that relayed a deeper, cynical message that was extremely anti-Christian. Consider the similarities to Christianity. The Lego movie has a parallel universe, just as there is a greater existence beyond our planet. The movie centers around a hero named Emmett, just as Christianity centers around a savior named Jesus. According to the Strong's Concordance, Emmett is the Jewish word for truth. John 14, 6 says, Jesus says to him, I am the way, the truth, and the life. No man comes to the Father but by me. There is no doubt this was intentional. In a Twitter conversation with the writers, Jeffrey Weiss with Religion News Service asked Phil Lord and Chris Miller if it was done on purpose. Their reply? Truth was Greg Silverman's idea at Warner Brothers, and we embraced it. Who is Greg Silverman? He is the president of creative development and worldwide production at Warner Brothers. His past Gnostic and successful projects include 300, Batman Begins, and The Matrix. All throughout the movie, there are references to the man upstairs, played by Will Ferrell's character. This is not only a figurative reference to God, but it is a direct reference to the God of the Lego people, because the man upstairs is the one who builds them. The Lord Business is kind of uh, the um, president slash CEO of Bricksburg. Uh, he's, uh, I think he's he's viewed as as being kind of a benevolent supreme ruler of all the Lego people. <laughs> and yet, behind the scenes, he's, he really, um, he's really a, a control freak who, who doesn't want a lot of creative expression or outside thought. He is the one who created everything to be perfect, who everyone is looking for, and who everyone is expecting to rescue them. This man upstairs built the Legos according to the instruction book and forces everyone to follow the rules. Everyone, especially Emmett, in the beginning of the film, follows all the instructions in the book. There is a line where President Business is addressing the city and says, Hi, I'm President Business, president of the Octan Corporation and the world. Let's take extra care to follow the instructions or you'll be put to sleep. And don't forget Taco Tuesday's coming next week. Everyone follows the rules. Everyone, and they happily do it. And, uh, and yet, Emmett is someone who's, who has a higher calling. He's bound for greatness. Emmett is the unlikely savior of a rebellious bunch that have broken away from the instruction book, claiming to value creativity over following the rules. On his journey to save the Legos from the tyrannical man upstairs, Emmett sacrifices himself to save the rest of the group. Everyone believes he is dead until the final moments of the film when he shows back up. Lord Business. Back from the dead, Brukowski? The comet, back from the dead, implies that he was resurrected, a twisted version of Jesus Christ. Do you see it now? The tyrannical man upstairs, who will put you to sleep if you don't follow the rules, represents God, and the instruction book represents the Bible. The rebellious son, who introduces chaos, disorder, and a disregard for the instruction book to a society built in perfection by the man upstairs, is of course Satan. The character who first gets Emmett to break the rules is ironically named Lucy. That is against the instructions. Wait, what's your favorite restaurant? The character who first got man to sin was Lucifer, or Satan. The name Lucy means light, and Lucifer means light bearer. Emmett is the hero savior for leading the rebellion while the man upstairs is painted as the bad guy. So present business is the bad guy? The movie ends with the man upstairs returning, 
He sees what the rebellious son has done to this world and begins to fix it by forcing his perfection upon the world in a kind of Armageddon. There is nothing the rebellious son can do about it. He has been defeated. The man upstairs wins. That is, until the rebellious son tells the man upstairs, you don't have to be the bad guy. You don't have to be the bad guy. Then, everything. the man upstairs recognizes value in chaos and rebellion. Remember that Emmet means truth? What is truth? The Bible says in Psalm 119, 151, You are near, O Lord, and all your commandments are truth. If the commandments are truth, and truth is not separate from Jesus, then the commandments cannot be separate from Jesus. Jesus himself affirmed this when he said, Think not that I am come to destroy the law or the prophets. I am not come to destroy, but to fulfill. The concept is evident even in the very language. These are the Hebrew characters for truth. These are the first, middle, and last characters of the Hebrew alphabet. If truth is equivalent with the commandments in the Bible, what happens when we remove the letter Aleph? We are left with the Hebrew word for death. Aleph is the character that most represents the oneness and glory of God. Remove God, you no longer have truth, the commandments, and you are left with death. Satan fell from heaven when he superseded the law of heaven by putting himself, his wants, desires, and aspirations before God. In a similar way, the Lego movie paints the story of a rebellion. The Bible tells us Satan started a war and what the crux of the war was about. And there was war in heaven. Michael and his angels fought against the dragon, and the dragon fought. It tells us that Satan violated the law of heaven when he put himself first. Romans 14.7 tells us, For none of us lives to himself, and no man dies to himself. And who was the primary object of his wrath after choosing this course of action? It was those who keep the commandments of God. And the dragon was angry with the woman, and went to make war with the remnant of her seed which keep the commandments of God and have the testimony of Jesus Christ. What is the Lego movie teaching us? To get rid of the instruction book, the Bible? Isn't that the reason we are all in this mess in the first place? Because Adam and Eve did not follow the instructions? It is interesting to note that Emmet, as taught by the Kabbalah, is the power to realize one's own deepest potential, which is in fact the power of the Jewish soul to bring about the ultimate realization of God's potential. Isn't this the same lie that the devil told Eve in the garden? To rebel against God and indulge in your own potential? Is that what makes everything awesome? The movie may give a very positive image about building self-esteem, but its real evil is removing the foundation of Christianity. That God is love and he's given us an instruction book for a good reason, we would be better off to follow it. Will Ferrell states in an interview about the moral message of the movie. Whether you're following the instructions or you're, or you're not, um, it really doesn't matter. Uh, and, um, and I think that's going to be a message that resonates with families. Any movie that heralds a rebellious savior who fights against the idea of following the rules is as anti-Christian as they come. Amen. Don't worry about what the others are doing. You must embrace what is special about you.